Good morning, a warm welcome to you as we gather together to worship here at St Mary's. My name is Andrew and I'll be leading our service today. We'll be thinking about Mary's part in the story of Christmas. And so let us start our worship together in prayer. So let us pray. Lord God, here we are open to you. Here we are, gathered together to worship you. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with us. Amen. Our first song is based on the words of Mary. Words that she was so full of praise that she said these words. They're recorded in the Bible. So let us sing, Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. Tell out my soul the glories of his word. Firm is his promise and his mercy sure. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord to children's children and forevermore. Wonderful words. And so true, isn't it, that we continue to tell the story of Jesus. His life changes our lives today. We are generations upon generations have heard the story and responded to it. We love that good news. And so we like to celebrate birthdays too. The unique day that everyone is born, we have that birthday. And so we're going to do that now. We're going to sing happy birthday, God bless you. So if it's your birthday today, this month, or even this week, we want to celebrate with you and wish you happy birthday.
is now going to read our Bible reading from Luke. And then Bishop Joe is going to come and unpack that and tell us more about the story of Mary. But first, here is Kay. The reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. The birth of Jesus is announced. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a town in Galilee named Nazareth. He had a message for a young woman promised in marriage to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Peace be with you. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. Mary was deeply troubled by the angel's message and she wondered what his words meant. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king, as his ancestor David was, and he will be the king of the descendants of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, I am a virgin, how then can this be? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and God's power will rest upon you. For this reason the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. Remember your relative Elizabeth. It is said that she cannot have children, but she herself is now six months pregnant, even though she is very old, for there is nothing that God cannot do. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. And the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Greetings to you from my kitchen this fourth Sunday of Advent when we're looking at the Annunciation of Gabriel to Mary, Luke chapter 1. I imagine Mary kneading some dough one fine day in her parents' kitchen. A fairly ordinary girl living a fairly ordinary life, doing a fairly ordinary thing, pressing it, stretching it, pounding it, pulling it. There's no end to the beautiful texture and funny shapes you can make. Doing an ordinary thing when an extraordinary thing happened. An angel pops up unannounced, as angels are wont to do. A little scary and dramatic right there in the kitchen. You can imagine her saying perhaps, did you get to the right house? And then perhaps thinking of safeguarding concerns, shall I go find my parents? And then after she's been addressed as highly favoured, thinking, could you just wait a minute while I run upstairs and take a shower and change my clothes, put on something decent? And doubtless her mother later saying to her, darling, were the surfaces cleaned? Had you done the dishes? No, no, no. God meets us in the midst of the ordinary, when we've got flour all over our hands. And what does the messenger of God announce? Essentially, into our nitty gritty, a wider perspective, God, world, saviour. I don't know if life was tough for her, but I'm willing to bet it might have been just the sort of circumstances as for many of us now that brings us to wonder what this life is all about. Is this all there is? And so the angel reminds us that since the beginning of time, God has loved the world he created. And since early in the foundation of Israel, God has promised a savior. God, world, savior, and then finally, the angel adds, here, now, you. An ordinary girl needing ordinary bread in an ordinary kitchen on an ordinary day. But the extraordinary thing about God is he loves the ordinary. It's through the ordinary things that God works in extraordinary ways. 
And even when we don't see it, when all we see is the ordinary, Mary listened. God, world, saviour. She responds, what? How? Me? Well, probably she said it in a, a more exclamatory voice than that. Me? Moi? Now, lest this angel start to sound like some text message, I want to make clear that he was not confined to a tweet of 140 characters. The angel explains a little more detail what he meant, what God was up to. She was going to have a baby, God's baby, and this baby was going to be the greatest and be a king forever. So I picture her with dough in her hands, just as she's forming it into a loaf. God's bread, my hands, my oven. Sorry, I couldn't quite resist that pun. But it's the divine extraordinary working in the human ordinary. That is God's way. And Mary discovered it was God's way with her cousin Elizabeth, who gave birth to another extraordinary baby in her old age. We know the, their exclamations of praise and excitement after they meet up and compare notes. Over and over again, Mary discovered it was God's way with Jesus, doing some extraordinary things with some very ordinary people. And still today. As I go around this diocese, I see over and over how God is doing extraordinary things with ordinary people in ordinary circumstances, in schools, in prisons, in car parks. Look on the website and you'll find the story of food being given away in some Camberley Parish car parks in Old Dean and at St Mary's, given for the blessing of whoever may need it. At the other side of the diocese, I met a man recently who, through dropping off a bag of ordinary groceries at his local food bank, has found his life turned around to support children using his IT skills to create a digital inclusion project so that they can learn from home even when they are self-isolating. Two weeks ago, I joined an online vigil to pray for those caught up in gender-based violence and the sex traffic industry, an ordinary hour where we were silent in prayer and lit a candle, trusting God to work in extraordinary ways. Yesterday, I received a Christmas letter from a former teacher of mine, a New Testament scholar, who reminded me, he's now in his 80s, reminded me that it was at his confirmation as a teenager at Holy Trinity Guildford, through a very ordinary sermon on Matthew 28, the Great Commission, where we are charged by Jesus to go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything he commands. And now, even in his late 80s, continues that teaching ministry, writing the most extraordinary books that are translated to all nations. And so here to today's gospel, a young teenage girl is called to bear a child, to be the God bearer, to fulfill an utterly unique, astounding, the most ultimate bridging role between heaven and earth, between the divine and the human, between the extraordinary and the ordinary. We may be preoccupied, we may be resistant, we may be fearful like her, Yet God is present in our homes, still popping up, no matter our bubbles, still delivering messages, no matter our isolation, still transforming ordinary people to do extraordinary things. It happens in that juxtaposition between God, world, saviour and what, how, me. I wonder in what circumstances you might have uttered any of those words recently, and in particular, how you might bring them together. I think of a young mum I spoke to not long ago, valiantly raising three young daughters who have had their share of struggles. She said, I've learned so much from listening and supporting them that I realise I might have something to offer others. So I've signed up, I'm training to be a counsellor. 
And do you know, I realised, she said, what a blessing that is. As I listen to others in their need, it puts my own family's situation in perspective and it helps me with what to say, how to cope. Ordinary things that become extraordinary, even painful things that become redemptive, that is God's way. God, world, saviour, and what, how, me. Yes, you. I am no Gabriel, but I do want to scatter some seed to set you wondering further. What extraordinary things might God be seeking to work through your seeming ordinary life? Whatever the important, whatever the ordinary parts of your life today, this Christmas period, this new year, I wonder if you can identify some ordinary situations in your life where you might pin your ears back and listen afresh to God, seeking his call to you. It might be while you're cooking in the kitchen, it might be while you're digging in the garden, it might be while you're sitting in your chair. I urge you to dare to hold out your ordinariness, the what, how, me stuff of your life to the level of the divine extraordinary, the God, world, saviour. There's a danger that this pandemic has closed down our horizons and I urge you to be especially intentional in stretching them out again and inviting God to interrupt you. Our God, who made the world, interrupted it by sending a saviour. That is what we celebrate at Christmas. This is who we follow in discipleship. This is what brings us to tell and tend and teach and treasure and transform, according to the five marks of mission, to offer our lives to God for whatever. Then I'd urge you to talk to someone about all this. It might be your spouse, it might be a neighbour, it might be your vicar, it might be a spiritual director or a vocations advisor. Those last two you can track down on the Diocese of Guildford website. Someone to help you to reflect on your life and your call. Even in tier three, you can do that over Zoom or by phone or by meeting up to go for a walk and talk. To talk about how your ordinariness might become part of God's extraordinariness. To discern what God may want to get up to in the new year through you. To listen the soul into a place of discovery. To piece together your understanding and experience of the past with your circumstances in the present and God's promises concerning the future. Essentially to bring together the God, world, saviour with the what, how, me? That's what happened to Mary, mother of our Lord, 2,000 years ago. And that's what's kept on happening ever since. I think of the 5th century Augustine landing in Canterbury on a mission to bring the gospel to England. I think of Mary Sumner, founder of the Mother's Union, over in Old Arlesford in 1876. And I think of my New Testament professor, that teenager who was confirmed in Holy Trinity Guildford. Ever since the Annunciation of Gabriel to Mary, we shouldn't be surprised, but expect God to be working out his extraordinary purposes through ordinary people like you and me. So keep up the kneading, the digging, the walking, recognising how in the ordinary stuff of our lives, God is at work in extraordinary ways. Indeed, Jesus talks about the yeast in the dough, which works often invisibly to make for tremendous transformation. He works in ordinary dough everywhere. He works even in dough that is full of gritty bits. He works again and again. He's working even when we don't realise it. God's way is to come among us to dwell within us and through us 
to raise life, to transform what is human ordinary into what is divine extraordinary. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Joe. We're going to pause for a moment as we think about our lives. Maybe we've been thinking less of ourselves, of what we bring to God, and how we come as we are, and then God takes our ordinary, our everyday, and is able to do so much, the extraordinary. So we're going to pause, and time to think about that, and turn back to Christ, Hear some words. Christ, the light of the world, has come to, to dispel the darkness of our heart. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. The Virgin Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive our disobedience to your will. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. Your Son, our Saviour, was born in poverty in a manger. Forgive us our greed and rejection of your ways. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The shepherds left their flocks to go to Bethlehem. Forgive our self-interest and lack of vision. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The wise men followed the star to find Jesus the King. Forgive our reluctance to seek you. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. May the God of love bring us back to himself and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I want to play as a song. It's a reflective piece. It's called, I Come in Simplicity. It's written and performed by an Irish band called Rend Collective. And at this time of the year, when life seems to be quite complex, the invitation to come to meet Jesus as we are, in simplicity. So let the words touch you, let the music minister you, and see what God says to you today. Oh 
I come with my broken song To you the perfect one To worship you in spirit and truth Only you, only you Give me a child-like heart Yes, my heart will sing how I love you And forever I'll sing Forever I'll sing Yes, my heart will sing how I love you. We have this beautiful stained glass window at St Mary's. Mary is holding Jesus. There are many symbols in this picture. And do in the future when you have time to come and look at it. But for now, let us use it as a focus for our prayers. God of the upside down world, we pray for everyone who is facing a dangerous challenge. We pray for all refugees and those who are persecuted. We pray for those facing health problems and waiting for treatment. We pray for those who are frightened to step out into a different future. Lord, strengthen and protect them. And as we pray and look at this window, we are reminded that you who were divine came fully human 
and as we pray you stand in the midst of our world and our lives and we thank you and so we draw our prayers together with the words of the Lord's Prayer and we'll watch a film of different languages, different people coming together saying our Father who art in heaven our Father in heaven hallowed be your name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who sin against us and lead us not in temptation deliver us from evil for thine, thine is the kingdom power and glory forever and ever In Mary we have a girl who was so ordinary and yet through her life did something extraordinary I wonder what God has for us as we come to him as we are our final hymn is O Jesus I have promised like Mary we are called to answer the call of God and the question for us is, are we willing, as the songwriter says, to put our footprints, our footsteps, into the footmarks of Jesus? He's gone before us. There's a wonderful picture, isn't it, called Footprints. And those footprints are already on the beach. And we realise that the God is, is carrying us through those difficult times. But I love this hymn writer who, who does it slightly differently, that imagine that there are the footprints of Jesus. And I imagine that we're like children that need to leap into them and take those steps of faith in where he's already gone. As we are, in our ordinariness to follow Jesus into the extraordinary. So let us sing, O oh Jesus I have promised to serve thee to the end.
St Mary's Church was built in 1937 and it was built in the style of, of the arts and craft. The arts and craft movement took simple everyday things and made them beautiful, often functional. So St Mary's Church is an oak framed building. We have this beautiful stained glass window which is a little bit of a later addition but still in that style. So I wonder what God will do this week. God the artist in his creativity taking us, his people, what we might think as being ordinary and doing something extraordinary with us. So let us pray. Lord God, when you call us, help us to say yes. When we can help someone, help us to say yes. When you offer us new life, Help us to say yes. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us today and evermore. Amen. We hope that you'll be able to join us over this Christmas period. Go to our website www.stmarieskamley.org.uk Everything is there. Services that are coming up services that we've pre-recorded so that you can go to such as the blessing of the crib or on monday the 21st the longest night for those who have struggled with christmas and looking for a more reflective service there is so much there for the services when you can come to st mary's there is a booking system you just click book now put your details in and that will register your booking we do have limited numbers due to the restrictions, but you will certainly receive a, a warm welcome and would love you to join us. So we pray that this week will be an adventure for you as you see God taking the ordinary and making something extraordinary with it. We hope you have a great week. Till next time, God bless. Bye-bye.